for the many promising destinations, which I must say does make you quite proud of being an Indonesian. It certainly makes me feel proud at the same, just because of just the sheer amount of beautiful destinations. If I may, uh, some of the things, some of the other places that I've visited as well, uh, East Kalimantan. One thing that I found about it was that it was, it had, it has a lot of potential and especially the coasts in Maratua. Yes. Yeah, the, the reefs there. Just yeah, the reefs is, uh, uh, Berau is uh, one of the pilot projects for sustainable tourism, whereby every time you travel, Messi, and this is a hit uh, within the Gen Z and the millennials, is we are offering a carbon uh, footprint calculator. So if you're traveling, for instance, by um, airplane and then you continue by a car, we will be able to calculate how much carbon emissions you're responsible for your trip. So, and then at the site in Brau, we're offering for you to offset that uh, by planting mangrove trees or mineral trees or any other activities such as uh, uh, waste uh, collections, waste management, that will allow you to offset. So you don't have this guilt, the guilty feeling that you're actually contributing to carbon emissions because being net zero is our target. And this sectors, uh, tourism and uh, in particular uh, tourism sectors, contribute 8% of the carbon emissions of the world. And we are in the process of cutting it by 50% to around 4% by 2035. And we are the first country in Southeast Asia, in ASEAN, that commits to Glasgow uh, declarations um, for climate actions. So we are in, uh, in a hurry. We are rushing to achieve 4% uh, carbon emission stop by 2035 and completely going net zero by 2045. So fingers crossed. Yeah, you guys are absolutely committing to reducing our carbon emissions as much as possible, it seems, and to sustainability, which is a great thing to see. I have to say, another project that um, the government is developing is the Bangga Berwisata di Indonesia Aja program, which, as we know in English, loosely translates to being proud to travel in Indonesia with the hashtag di Indonesia Aja. As an attempt to accelerate the nation's economy, through the tourism sector. So, can you explain to us this program just a little bit and share with us your ministry strategy um, to assure the success of the program? Millions of Indonesians, especially during Christmas break or New Year's uh, celebrations, would be cool to be vacationing in destinations such as uh, Bangkok uh, or Kuala Lumpur or Singapore, even as far as Turkey, Europe, uh, the United States. And more than 10 billion US dollars is actually spent in these trips. So we are now uh, trying to change the mindset that it's actually cooler, it's more fun to travel within Indonesia. And we're uh, creating travel pattern, we're creating incentives so that you would uh, actually proud of spending your holidays here uh, in the country and uh, learning about new destinations, helping the sectors uh, improve, uh, trying uh, different experience. So this is something that uh, we're starting uh, to campaign very aggressively starting next week. Uh, we're launching this 13th of December uh, and hopefully it will change the mindset of uh, uh, Indonesians thinking about uh, going abroad for uh, vacationing by end of the year. And the president said it himself and I quote, he said that, well, I saw this uh, Indonesians, in particular government officials going outside taking Instagram pictures and wearing, uh, you know, I wouldn't mention uh, the brand, but wearing uh, a luxury brand that is not 
uh, made by Indonesians and proud of it. Why don't we change that? Why don't we go to Raja Ampat, Labuan Bajo, Wakatobi, Borobudur, Danau Toba? Why don't we go to Maratua? Why don't we go to uh, even Cianjur in uh, the uh, tourism village Situ Gunung Padang and wear local products? Bangga Buatan Indonesia, proud of Indonesian local products, Indonesian made products, and Bangga Berwisata di Indonesia or di Indonesia aja. Proud to travel and do your vacationing in Indonesia. I have to say, I can't agree more, especially considering I have to, I'm so sorry, I have to mention your clothes again. They're just absolutely amazing. And yes, it is absolutely beautiful everywhere in this country, it's, but it's almost completely hidden. So it would be such a shame to not have those um, destinations exposed, you know, for people to see, to look at, to look on in media and think, I really want to go there. And to, and to see that it's really close, it's much easier than going to say uh, Malaysia or Bangkok. It's much cheaper as well. And and if you look at, uh, sorry to cut you off, uh, Messi, in terms of the Travel and Tourism Development Index that is issued by World Economic Forum, Indonesia is ranked now higher than Malaysia, Thailand, Vietnam, and the Philippines. Why? Because we offer destinations that is focused on quality and sustainability uh, based on nature and culture. And very importantly, the destination is inclusive. We are, uh, in, uh, we are bringing uh, small medium enterprises, women, more women, more young generations be involved in the sectors. So uh, there is no reasons why we should go abroad for uh, enjoying your vacations. Uh, look at this 17,000 islands plus. And I was in North Malukus. It's absolutely gorgeous. They, um, you wouldn't believe that it's, it's in Indonesia. And the sights, the sound, the vibrations, the local foods, the smell, you, you feel that um, uh, energized. It's, it's, uh, uh, I've been to many places, and every time I go to these places, I meet people that makes me even more optimistic that uh, Indonesia is going to be a great country. Now I've seen, I've heard, I should say, that uh, you guys actually have some business partners uh, that are going to help with the um, the Bangga Berwisata di Indonesia as well. Is that correct? Yo. Obviously, we have media as partners, and we'd like to bring you to destinations. Oh, see. yes, please. <laughs> Come on, Dave. Make the MOU. Let's do it. Let's go. And we, uh, we really hope that uh, a new way of uh, uh, promotion and promoting is bringing good-looking guy like you. Oh, uh, thank you. Uh, and <laughs> great organizations like uh, See Today to destinations and promote. Uh, long gone are the ways of promoting whereby you uh, spend like spray bullets uh, because we don't have much resources anyway. But we are so uh, optimistic that with a new way of uh, big data analytics uh, that has helped us target better and segment our market better, uh, we're in the process of creating 4.4 million better quality jobs by 2024. So these sectors, which is home of 45 million Indonesians, um, will contribute between 15 to 20 percent of the economy. Right now we're about uh, 10 to 12 percent, but it's going to go 15 to 20 percent if we continue this uh, track, if we continue to build uh, the infrastructures and train uh, bring capacity building type of activities for the um, human capital uh, within the sectors. And I'm completely uh, confident that, that we're, we're going to reach those numbers. I certainly hope so too. Let's zoom out a little bit from Indonesia and into the world. 
So in late November, uh, you attended the WTTC Global Summit. If I may ask about that in Riyadh, could you share with us some insights uh, from the Global Summit and how Indonesia does and how it could play a role in the global tourism industry? Well, thanks to the leadership of uh, our leaders uh, in G20 and now we're taking over ASEAN chairmanship, Indonesia elevated so much. Uh, we uh, were now recognized as leaders, not only in the tourism sectors, but also in uh, the global settings. The G20 was a great success. Uh, and I think we should be proud. And it was a proud moment uh, to be Indonesians, whereby not only we have the beautiful country, not only uh, we have the resources, in particular natural resources, not only we have uh, uh, hospitable people, but we have the leadership now. So where do we go next? Uh, at the WTTC, because of our role that is being viewed as a now key, uh, playing a very significant role in this recovery of, of tourism, uh, we're regarded as best practice in terms of the recovery. Not only recover together, recover stronger, but also we are recovering better. We are injecting this notion. We're not focusing on the quantity. We don't want to be uh, uh, focused on uh, recovery uh, that achieved the same numbers like pre-pandemic, but actually not giving the uh, impact to jobs, to local uh, communities and the local economies. So at WTTC, uh, we're very proud that Indonesia was uh, um, featured very prominently. And our strategy is actually now also being adopted by most of other countries in terms of the recovery. Uh, obviously, uh, we have a lot of competitions, uh, not only within uh, our region, but also globally. But because Indonesia is still top of mind and Bali is such a strong brand for Indonesia, uh, we could capitalize on that. And next year, we believe, uh, I think industry is now projecting to double uh, foreign tourist arrivals and also probably more than double in terms of the uh, tourism revenue. So uh, WTTC showed that uh, Indonesia is now uh, not just a um, uh, middle of the pack uh, country, but we're, we're part of the leadership groups uh, within this, this tourism sectors. It's interesting that uh, Indonesia has actually been a source of innovation, uh, a source of inspiration for other countries to take uh, an example of, which I think is really cool and it shows a lot about the, uh, the work that you guys do. And I think to learn about you know, sustainable tourism as well and to learn about how that impacts the communities and what the, um, the, the ministry does to uh, continue developing the industry. It is all very interesting indeed. My Sandy, I have one more question to ask, and perhaps that is, so far, what is your favorite destination in all of Indonesia that you visited? I would get into trouble if I name one, <laughs> <laughs> but I've been to more than 125 uh, uh, tourism village across the country. I would say that uh, three of the top uh, tourism village that I enjoy the most is uh, uh, Panglipuran Tourism Village in Bangli, Bali. Uh, that is regarded as the cleanest uh, tourism village of the world by UNWTO. Uh, tourism village uh, Nglangaran in Gunung Kidul, Yogyakarta, which won Best Tourism Village of 2021. Uh, and uh, I would say uh, the uh, tourism village in Lake Toba, which is Huta Tinggi. Uh, that's uh, really show the beauty of this largest uh, volcanic lake. Uh, so 
these three uh, are examples of around 400 uh, tourism villages that probably rank very high and about 4,000 overall tourism village. But if you focus on super priority destinations, I think these five super priority destinations are all my favorites uh, on top of Bali. And you mentioned uh, Likupang. Uh, we just got back from Likupang and I think uh, the ecotourism in Likupang is so spectacular. I was always thinking about underwater, but actually when you go into the uh, uh, the trekking there in the Pulisan Bay, as well as in the Likupang and uh, Northern Minahasa, it's so beautiful. This is something that uh, I believe we need to uh, focus more on and we need to bring in uh, partners uh, so that we could uh, really uh, accelerate uh, the recovery of the tourism. And I kept on saying this, but at the end of the day is the livelihood of the people. It's the jobs, it's their income, uh, is how tourism creates six times more jobs than other industry and how creative economy that is a backbone of uh, uh, Indonesian economy that uh, now number three in the world after the US and Korea. And we have uh, now produced great movies, uh, good music, uh, and also our culinary with uh, Indonesia Spice of the World program. We are uh, definitely in a sweet spot uh, and we, use, uh, we need to use this momentum uh, to even create uh, better targets uh, for the uh, focus on, we call it Golden Indonesia by 2045. This is Indonesia being a developed nation. It's all part of a big plan, isn't it? To, uh, to ensure and continue the development of Indonesia, as you said, to be golden by 2040. Masandi, thank you so much for your time. This was certainly one of the most insightful uh, conversations that I've had probably during my life and I certainly hope that you viewers as well find a lot of insight and a lot of knowledge from this talk with the Minister of Tourism and Creative Economy Sandiaga Uno Pasandi Masandi thank, thank you, you so much